And a warm welcome to the program. I'm Melinda Akinlami. On today's episode, we continue exploring exciting collaborations in the art space. For instance, the second edition of the Art Miabo International Art Festival features a lot of creatives. Then we move to Benin City, the Edo State capital, where two veteran artists are used to inspire the student community. We have that and more when we see our art quote for today. To be creative means to be in love with life enough that you want to enhance its beauty. About 20 music professionals and about 30 visual artists from in and out of Nigeria celebrate the second edition of the Art Miabo International Art Festival in Lagos. of Afrobeats is the theme for the second edition of the Art Miabo International Art Festival in Lagos. It explores the way music and visual arts can complement and influence each other to birth an exhibition. This exhibition um, is inspired by the Afrobeat music, and so it's called the Arts of Afrobeat. It's centered around the creativity that is born out of the Afrobeat music, which is the visual as art aspect of it, which is the managing aspect of it, which is the video aspect of it, which is the performance aspect of it, which is equally the photography aspect of it. All that has come out that creates the image of the musician. So what we're saying is we're celebrating or rather we're exhibiting what you know projects the musician. And so what you're seeing right now is an exhibition of the character that the Afrobeat artist has, which is his independence, his ability to create music out of nothing in a very, very pedestrian kind of way. There are no boundaries, there are no outlines to say this is how you're going to do it. So when you go through this entire exhibit now, what you see is people who are expressing themselves as themselves. And that is what the Afrobeat artist does. He expresses himself as himself. 24 visual artists from inside and outside Nigeria exhibit 200 works of art that capture the essence of the Afrobeat musician and reveal colors in a genre which is gaining more popularity. We needed um, people who had a sense of color. If you notice, there's a lot of color here, a sense of color. And who can mix different colors? Because that's how we are in Africa. You know, the prints that we wear, you can see one print has like 20 colors on it, and we still look nice. So if you can project that on canvas, which is almost like how the Afrobeat artist is. His music is streets, the pidgin English mixed with his language, mixed with English and everything. So that's what we're projecting here in a more visual, visual way. Uh, the body of works here is they are very deep in terms of uh, um, term of thinking, in terms of you know critical thinking, where it's not just being flat, it's not just looking at the work and you know have it as just it's just there, but you know something that we also disturb your sense of understanding, the sense of your um, reasoning, and you tend to you know go deeper and ask you know the artist what exactly are you talking about and that is what because that expression is an extension of that artist you can never talk about the person you can only um predict you can only imagine this is this person is like this we can never you know talk exactly what the artist or what the person made up of and that since the art is an extension of the artist Definitely, you cannot ever understand what the art is done, and that is exactly what you know the art of Afrobeat is projecting. Let people express themselves and let all the audience 
try to be in their own uh, putting themselves in the position of the artist the influence of the genre is traced to the legend that brought it to life to its impact on contemporary culture It was more of the fella aspect of it, yes. I was a huge fan growing up of fella, very huge fan. Um, probably didn't know much about his background, but you know, I just loved what he sang and how he sang it, the boldness of his, more of his creativity. It was just, it was just this audacious aspect of him that was really, really um, captivating. Like you, you would want that kind of freedom, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, most of us wanted it. You know, listening to fella at a certain time was like almost like a taboo in most homes yeah and so you and he didn't care if it was a taboo in most homes he just went about singing his music and see what has happened now a lot of people have benefited from that that yeah because now parents are now singing with their kids you know all sorts of songs that are coming out yeah For the work we say, uh, Ibeji, that is twins. Okay. In, in Yoruba land, yeah. twins are a special child and a special gift to the family. And whoever that have the opportunity, the gift of twins, do they do normally celebrate the family? Although. Uh, People do normally aspire to have twins, especially the rich one, but to the surprise of everybody and as the work of God, twins do, not, they do normally go to rich people, but they do normally, it is the very poor people that do normally have twins, and what they believe that uh, once you have twins, especially in Yoruba land, then it will bring good luck, success, and wealth to that family. This one behind me is titled The Magician's Apprentice. So um, this one in particular is talking about the struggle, the struggle of men in society, generally. How um, people seem to think that being a man is easy, but well, it's not. So in this illustration behind me, I try to like illustrate an headless figure sitting with balloon in his hand trying to break two eggs. So it looks like egg is easy to break, but um, you are using balloon to break it. So it's like the balloon looks bigger than the egg, but to people it looks, ah, this should be easy. It should be easy to, to exercise being a man, to live as a man. But in its real sense, just like I, it, it might shock people to see that it's not easy to break an egg with, with balloon. Not even one, but two, for that matter. So I just feel there is a need for us to talk about the struggle of a man. So I wanted this particular piece to comment on that, um, that reality. works um, which the title is um, Ake Konju. Uh, it is um, gotten from you know from a moment of solitude actually you know when I was totally down and I feel like no I, I have to do something different you know you know trying to find myself trying to find my space in the outward and also uh, you know in solitude as well so um, the titled series so the, the first series is self-discovery you know this first series you know it talks more about you know our personality our individuality you know our experience and how we you know we overcome challenges you know and everyday adversity you know how we surpass them 
And the second series, which I'm also exhibiting here, which is tied to Joseph in Colors. You know, I try as much as possible to take us back, you know, to the past, which while um, Joseph in coats of many colors, and um, how he fought, you know, fought for his freedom, and how his dreams, you know, took him to, to many places in a didn't even thought of. So that is basically the mini behind the, the piece. This exhibition is an opportunity to give the audience a history lesson to appreciate how the music has evolved over the years from the lyrics, beats, costumes, covers and other elements. I use earth color to show people that I'm African. Earth color, I used to compose my color. I don't use color that uh, uh, you buy in shop like this. I used to, to compose my color. I used to, you know, you know, coffee. I try to work with coffee and you get what you have there. So coffee, nobody will not teach you in school to use coffee as color. But after training, you have to do your own research. It's after the research, the result is there. So by this, I'm, I'm trying to say that art is inside body. If you, 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 you work on yourself, you can bring up something new that people never know before. What I want people to learn you know, from this whole experience is that there's a fine art of Afrobeat that people are overlooking. I think it should be a subject that should be taught in schools because we're learning Impressionism, Expressionism, Cubism, and all that. I think it's time that we gravitate towards what is ours and look at it and say, okay, what is this African art? Because Afro is African. So what is this African art style? And how is it, you know? When people walk into this place, they'll get it. They will understand. It's the reason why, if you notice, we have installed art on art. The walls, they're not plain white, or plain pink, or plain this, so we make sure that we put those textures. So it's clashing. Do you know why? Because we don't care. We're African, we're proud. This is how we do stuff. Paintings, sculptures, installations, and performances look at the similarities and differences between the beat and music and visual art. A sound which can be felt and become an inspiration for artists to create amazing pieces. Our wordsmith today is by Imaxi Art called Africans. Behold your glory. Arise, O African, from the depths of despair. Take your rightful place. It's your entitlement to bear. Embrace a trophy that awaits you. So bold, for you are destined for greatness, as the tales of old. Rise up from the ashes. Let your spirit soar. For you are the embodiment of resilience forevermore. Your strength is unmatched, your will unbreakable, and your heart beats with a rhythm that's unshakable. Let the world hear your voice and behold your glory, for you are the light that shines in an endless story. Embrace your heritage, your culture, your pride, for your spirit is unbreakable and your soul cannot be denied. So rise, O African, and take your place for you are the essence of beauty and the embodiment of grace. Let your heart be filled with hope and your spirit with fire, for you are the conqueror of dreams and the master of desire. Yes, let your heart be filled with hope and your spirit with fire fire those lines stood out for me i appreciate him for penning that down and having a work of art to go with it well done now let's take a moment on the program art house returns with more do stay with us 
These are the works we sent in this week. Let's begin with this one called Northern Nigeria Palace Guards. It's an oil on canvas work by Simpson Madi. And this acrylic on canvas piece is done by Light Ghana Ghana and it's untitled. The inspirational ginger is what Victor Morawo is giving his audience with this mixed media on canvas piece. Darasimi in his place of stimulation is a charcoal and acrylic on canvas work done by Samson Adetunji. Then Seasons is a watercolor on cardboard piece done by Ayo Ogumola. The Yellow Rose is how Imisi Adegbite captures this work done with oil on canvas. Then Kane Day Mayawa is giving us this euphoria too. It's done with acrylic on canvas. Then Samuel has a head full of toys. It's an ink and digital painting. And that concludes the works of art you sent in recently. We appreciate you for sending them in and encourage you to keep them coming. An exhibition organized by the National Gallery of Arts in Benin, the Edo State Capital, is used to inspire creative arts students within the University of Benin as two veteran artists from the institution are honored. The event hall at the Kenwell campus comes alive with special guests the University of Benin Management, students and art enthusiasts from different works of life. They gather to witness an art exhibition of works done by veteran sculptors Princess Elizabeth Olu and Chief Ellis Erimona, both alumna of the University of Benin and respected in the arts industry. say that she has been instrumental to my becoming an artist. I learned a lot from her. Uh, growing up with a very strong woman, I'll call her. She was very hardworking and um, she never really, you know, took me aside to say, let me teach you how to do art in the home. But she was also my teacher at the Federal Government Girls College. I had, uh, she had, um, I think I had two years with her uh, as a student. Uh, but what's more important that is she's been celebrated as the first female from the University of Benin. And I think this is very important for institutional memory. And the fact that she went into bronze casting, she's more known for the feat as the first female to go into bronze casting in Benin City. And uh, sometimes this also eclipses her uh, involvement in all that genre of the arts. Like she was also involved in making a large uh, scale sculpture in cement and granite. She was also involved in performance arts. She was a very good costumer. She, she took delight in designing edo costumes for those who took, uh, who wanted to dress in the very beautiful um, kufior and costumes of the edo people. So there was a lot. She was particularly interested in the history of uh, her culture, and these are things that she passed on to us as children. A top official of the National Gallery of Art leads guests around the works of art on display. 
explaining the essence of most of the pieces, which is for the edification of students and the university community. These have various representations. Mm. The circle could represent the eye mm. in human forms. Mm. The triangle could represent the head sometimes. While the square and the rectangle represent the chest, the abdominal side of the body. So the artist has the ability to interplay with this and achieve a, a form. A myriad of authentic images are on display, both in soft and hard representations. Princess Oluwu worked in the traditional Benin bronze, showing a female perspective in most of her creations and leading the pack for a lot of women in this field. While Chief Arimona's works are distinctive as well. The interesting thing is that when the history is being told about her involvement in bronze casting, they usually take it from the time she got to Egun Street in 1976. But in actual fact, uh, when she was teaching at the Toan Girls Grammar School, where she taught for about 10 years, um, she met with a black blacksmith uh, who used to cast uh, parts of uh, the guns that he repaired in brass and he was he had a studio opposite Itoangel's Grammar School in 1966. Mm -hmm. So our first uh, encounter with bronze was in 1966 and then later in 1976 uh, she showed further interest and her father who was king of Benin, His Royal Majesty of Akenzo II who reigned between 1933 and 1978 and so he encouraged her and told the Guild of Casters that they should open up their foundry for her and then she learned that. But what's also interesting again too, that is in 2014, we had a public art display and we went back to Igun Street to do an iteration in a public uh, space using the street as backdrop to our work and inviting other artists as well to do their various interventions. And in a sense, it was a way of uh, commemorating Benin art, Benin history, and coming back to say thank you to the people of Igun Street. To add spice to the event, students from the Theatre Arts Department of the University of Benin present cultural choral songs and spectacular dance steps adorned in Benin apparels. The work of art that captures my fancy would be this work of art that's titled The Liberation of the Women Folk. I like the fact that it talks about the liberation of women. I believe it represents how women were liberated from the time of oppression and um, I would say when they were being subjugated under the rule of the men and now they are getting their freedom to express themselves and um, actually attain their rights. So that's why I love this work of art right here. I think women are free to do whatever they desire to do. I don't think they should be limited by sex. Uh, in the past, we, we, you know, people were doing art according to gender lines. Uh, if you did textile, oh, that's for females. And if you did um, pottery, yes, yeah, for females. But when you went into working with metals or wood, the, it was the preserve of males. But I think that is changing a lot. She actually opened a path for a lot of females here in Bidin City. And of course, I also specialize in metal design. This exhibition was organized by the National Gallery of Art in collaboration with the University of Benin at Doe State. It's necessary to inspire young creatives so they know that Nothing is impossible once they put their heart to it. Like these artists displaying their works of art on the next episode of Art House. Next week on Art House. Kindred Spirits is an exhibition by the duo of Tayo Olayode and Adi Odufa by SMO Contemporary in Lagos. We encourage you to keep liking, sharing and viewing our page so more people can enjoy the ever-bubbly and ingenious art scene in the country.
Your Art House experience doesn't have to end when the show is not on television. Interact with us on our various social media platforms. See any edition of Art House on our website or YouTube page. Join our very interactive Facebook page by joining the group on Art House on Channels. We're everywhere. The curtain falls on the program, but the conversation continues on the next episode. But feel free to keep engaging with us on our various social media platforms. And remember, you can also view this and other episodes of the show on our YouTube page. I'm Melinda Kinlami. Stay safe and keep being creative.